Joined now on the broadcast by Tom Boyning, voice of the WHL champion Seattle Thunderbirds. Tom, start us off by telling us about the championship run, an exciting finish to the WHL playoffs last year. Definitely was winning game six in Regina in overtime to capture the Thunderbirds' first ever Western Hockey League championship. They celebrated their 40th anniversary season last year. Took them 40 years, but I think if you'd ask the fans if this is the way it would be on the 40th anniversary season, they'd take it. Two years in a row, they went to the Western Hockey League Championship Series. The year before, they'd lost to Brandon in five, but three of those games were lost in overtime by the same 3-2 to two score. So this was a hungry team going into last year, and despite a lot of injuries, because they did miss about 300 man games to injury, they were a very cohesive unit and fought through that adversity, and they had a singular mindset, a goal to get back to that championship series and win the Cup. Looking this year, how do things project? Sometimes that can be good for a team going forward, and sometimes the cover is empty the following year. How does it play out in Seattle? It's probably the latter, because this this, this past group that led us to the last two WHL Championship Series, they played together for four years. I think combined over those four years, they won 170 games, but that core group of players has all moved on. Most of the, the pro ranks, either the NHL with, I think, Matt Barzell, I think that's where he'll play, or so many of them will be in the AHL next season. So it is a reload or rebuild year, not only on the bench, but behind the bench, too, because we lost our head coach, Steve Conowalchuk, who took a job as an assistant with the Anaheim Ducks. So Matt Odette, in his first year, he's been an assistant the past four years. We, we lost another assistant coach as well. He just decided to take a job outside of hockey and start a family. So we have two new assistant coaches, a new head coach, and a lot of new faces. Very different team this year than we've had the past four. One player I wanted to ask about, Jared Tishka, fifth-round draft pick of the Montreal Canadiens. A lot of Habs fans in this part of the world. Tell us about him. He'll be going to his third full season. It seems like he's been here longer because even as a 16-year-old two years ago, he was a top six defenseman getting regular minutes both in the regular season and in the playoff run. And, of course, last year as a 17-year-old was among the top four defensemen. This year... I don't want to say he's got the skates of Ethan Bear to fill because they're not the same kind of a player, but they want to get more offensive production out of him. Last year he had six goals, 19 assists, only 25 points. But, you know, Ethan Bear was so prolific offensively that we didn't need that from Jared Tishka last year. I think they want his offensive production pick up. I think they want to see him be more of a two way player. He'll get more time on the power play and on penalty kill as well. So he's going to step into a much bigger role this year on that Tiber Blue line. I wanted to talk, too, about goaltending in Seattle because very interesting situation in terms of how the Thunderbirds won the WHL championship last year in that regard. Yeah, youngster Carl Stankowski, it was a 16-year-old season. He'd actually turned 17 right before the playoffs began in March. But we lost Ryland Toth to injury, a 20-year-old goaltender we had traded for before the season began. He won 36 regular season games. Carl only played in seven regular season games last year. He got hurt, actually. Last year at the U-17 tournament in October, didn't see him again until March. And then he took over in goal and had that incredible playoff run where he won 16 games. He only lost four, and two of those were overtime. Unfortunately, he got hurt again this summer in preparation for the Ivanhoe Link tournament with Team Canada. Didn't participate there, and he's going to be out probably till November, possibly till early December. We don't know specifically when he'll be back. They're, they said initially late October, early November. So Seattle actually just made a trade with the Edmonton Oil Kings to bring in an 18-year-old goaltender, Liam Hughes. So we've kind of got three healthy goaltenders right now, but the one everybody wants to see, we're not going to be able to see until maybe November. Hopefully he heals up. Lastly, I wanted to ask, Tom, you've been with Seattle for a long time, 16 years, I believe. Tell us some of the big names, best names you've seen come through playing with the Thunderbirds. This last group was incredible, but I go back to my first two or three years with this team, and they had some pretty good talent. Nate Thompson, who's played in the NHL for quite a while, most recently, I believe, with Anaheim, was on one of those teams, and I remember as a skinny kid, and then he's really matured and became such a terrific player. A guy like Brendan Dillon, defenseman with the San Jose Sharks, never drafted in the Western Hockey League, never drafted in the NHL. He came to us as a five foot three defenseman. He left, I think he was six foot three and about uh, 210. So it was just, it was fun to watch his progression. And 
I think one guy, I think at some point, will make it to the NHL. Played with us the last three years as an import, Alexander True. He's got the size. Of course, he's going to be renowned around here as the guy who scored that uh, game-winning overtime goal that won the first-ever championship. He signed an NHL deal with the San Jose Shark team in San Jose, the Barracuda. He was at the main camp with the Sharks, just was sent down to their AHL camp. He was an enjoyable player to watch grow, and of course, obviously, Matt Barzell. And just that last group that came through, you know, Scott Enzer, who signed an AHL deal with the Islanders AHL team, is in main camp right now with New York. Those guys, what they were able to accomplish playing together for four years, what a terrific run it was. Certainly fun for you and fans in Seattle and Rocky fans in Nova Scotia, Alexander True, cousin of Nick Ehlers, who played in Halifax. Tom, thanks for telling us about everything in Seattle. Best of luck calling the games this year. Well, we all start zero and zero, don't we? <laughs> that is for sure. That is Tom Boyding joining us on the broadcast. You're listening to Curse Star Caper at Screaming Eagles Hockey at 1270 CJCB.